Hello and welcome back to Fourier Transform, the video series where we talk a lot about the construction of Fourier series. And indeed, in today's part 10, we will calculate the Fourier series for a very important example. And it will turn out that this is the crucial example one has to know in order to show that the Fourier series converges for every L2 function. Therefore, you could say this is the first step for proving Parseval's identity. However, before we dive into the calculation, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. Please check out my website in the description to see how you can support the channel and get access to the additional material. Okay, with that let's immediately start and please never forget what we want is to prove Parseval's identity here. And as already mentioned, we want to do that for all L2 functions. And there we should start with some simple L2 functions, which we usually call step functions. So these are just functions that are piecewise constant. So for example, they could look like this, and then they should repeat 2 pi periodically. And please also note, it does not matter at all what they do at the jump points here. This is the same reason as always, the integral simply does not care if we change the function at a finite set of points. Moreover, what you should see here is that such a step function can be built by using single step functions. Or in other words, if we understand what a very simple step function does, then we can use a linear combination to get the thing for all step functions. However, of course, this would be the next step. First, let's look at such a simple step function here. And as always, it's sufficient to sketch the function on the interval minus pi to pi. Hence, let's say here we have minus pi and here plus pi. And now you might already guess, we want that the function is at the value 1 and at the value 0. And moreover, we can say that at the boundary points, it should be at 1 as well. So there you see, with that we have a well-defined function and now we can calculate the Fourier series of this one. Of course, for that we need a 2 pi periodic function, which is not a problem, because we can just repeat this picture again and again. And in addition, we should also write down the formal definition of this function, and let's call it h with index a. And there you might already guess that a should be exactly this x value for the jump. Okay, so what we have is h a of x is equal to 1 or 0, depending in which interval x lies. More precisely, we have 1 if x lies in the interval minus pi to a. And we have 0 if x lies in the open interval i to pi. And that's it. That's the whole definition we need here. And please note that this definition works for every a in the interval minus pi to pi. In other words, with this example, we cover all examples where a lies somewhere here in the middle. And the surprising thing is that it will turn out that this is all we need to show Parseval's identity for all L2 functions. Indeed, there is some strong theory in between, but in the end, the only calculation we have to do is for this example. Therefore, this is exactly what we will do now. Let's calculate the Fourier series for this example. This means we have to calculate the coefficients ck. Hence what we have to do is to calculate the inner product of the basis vector ek combined with the function ha. Hence we know this is just a normal integral where we have to integrate from minus pi to pi. And inside we have the exponential function and ha of x. And of course now we can use that the function ha is 0 on the right hand side. Hence we only have to integrate on the left hand side which means from minus pi to a. And what remains inside the integral is just the constant 1. So we just have the exponential function here. Therefore in order to solve this integral we only have to find an antiderivative of this exponential function. And then we see we have to distinguish two different cases. The first case is k is equal to 0, which means we integrate the constant 1 here. Hence in this case, the integral is just the length, the distance between minus pi and a. 
which is simply a minus minus pi. So we have a plus pi. And this one divided by the constant 2 pi. Okay, and with that we have c0. And then for the second case, k is not equal to 0, we actually have to use our antiderivative of the exponential function. Which is again the exponential function just with the constant minus ik in front. And then as usual, we just put in the limits of the integral. So we have e to the power minus ika minus e to the power ik pi. And that's it, this is our second case. So you see, calculating the Fourier coefficients in this case is not complicated at all. And there I would say, this is always a good point to visualize the Fourier series with a graph. And for this we just use a Python code you can also find in the description. And here as a reminder, of course you can also go to the real Fourier series with cosine and sine functions. You just have to transform the coefficients and this is something we have already discussed. For example, ak you get out as 2 times the real part of ck. And bk you get as minus 2 times the imaginary part of ck. Indeed, this is easy to check and may be helpful to remember because the real Fourier series might be better for plotting. Then I would say let's start plotting the function and here you can see we have chosen a to be equal to minus 2. Hence these two lines here represent our function ha and the line here in the middle is already our Fourier series up to n is equal to 0. Which means it's only the constant function given by our constant here. So let's simply increase our n. So here you can see we have already added one cosine and one sine function. And here you can see the approximation is in the L2 sense. So from the points up here we are far off, but it's needed to get the integral in the right order. However, if we increase the order of the Fourier series, we can get higher and higher here. So already at n is equal to 3, we have something that represents our step function more or less. So let's just increase our n step by step. This is already very good because everything looks correct. And now to close this visualization, let's jump to 200. There we have a lot of oscillations, so we barely see our original function anymore. So even in the pointwise sense, we are very close to the function, at least in this area here. So at least our visual conclusion here is that the Fourier series converges in the L2 sense as we expected. Therefore, let's now go to the mathematical proof by showing Parseval's identity. In order to do that, we have to take our coefficients ck and then we simply have to sum them up. More precisely, we have to sum up the absolute value of ck squared. Therefore, let's first calculate this number for each k. And obviously, only the case k is not equal to 0 makes some work here. So what we do is to multiply this number here with its complex conjugation. So indeed, this should not be too complicated. Because we just have to multiply some exponential functions. But first, the coefficient in front is simply 1 divided by 4 pi squared, k squared. And then we simply have the multiplication of the exponential functions. So we just multiply them and then we get 4 terms. The first one we see the exponential functions cancel out, so we get out 1. And for the two middle ones we have to combine the exponential functions, so we get pi plus a inside. And we have 1 with a plus sign and 1 with a minus sign. And finally the last exponential functions cancel out again. So there we have it and now we can put both things together. So what we get is 2 minus 2 times the cosine. Indeed, adding up these two exponential functions gives us 2 times the cosine of the same argument. Hence, the last simplification we can do here is to cancel a 2. Okay, so this is a nice formula for these real numbers here. And now we know to show Parseval's identity, we have to sum them up. So the next step is to write a sum symbol. 
And there, please don't forget, we also have C0 involved. This one was a plus pi divided by 2 pi, and now we also have to square it. And then what remains is the whole sum k goes from minus n to n, but without 0. So let's write it like that, with the additional information that we exclude 0. And as you can see, I've already pulled out the factor 1 over 2 pi squared. And now we can simply use our formula from above, which simply tells us that we have two terms. The first one is 1 over k squared, and the second one minus the sum with the cosine, also divided by k squared. And that's it, this is the thing we have to consider. And we should immediately recognize two things. First, the whole formulas here don't change if we substitute k with minus k. Therefore, we can just rewrite the thing as a sum from k is equal to 1 to n and 2 times it. And the second thing you should recognize is that we have convergent series here if we send n to infinity. Therefore, the only thing we need to know now is the limit, the value of these series. However, first let's rewrite it from 1 to n and then we cancel this 2 here. So indeed, this makes the whole thing easier to read. And now in the next step, we go to the limit n to infinity. Which means we need to know these two values to finish our proof. Therefore, let's call them star and 2 star. And now the question is, how can we calculate them? And there I should tell you, there is a general formula for such a series where the cosine and 1 over k squared is involved. This formula holds for every x in the interval 0 to 2 pi, so it's applicable for both terms here. And it tells us that the limit of this convergent series is given by x minus pi squared divided by 4 minus pi squared divided by 12. So this is the general formula. It's not so easy to prove it, but we can definitely do it. However, I would say let's first apply the formula here. Now the first case is obviously that x is equal to 0. So there we get pi squared over 4 minus pi squared over 12. So we have 2 twelfths of pi squared. Which simply implies that we have pi squared over 6. And on the other hand, for 2 star, we have that this x is equal to pi plus a. So the first term here is i squared over 4. And the second just remains as it is. Okay, so these are the limits we need, and now we can just put them into our limit for the c case. So now we go here from minus infinity to plus infinity. And then of course the constant does not change in the limit, and here we already calculated what we get. And please note that we have a minus sign in front of the cosine sum, so we have a sign flip here. And moreover, we also recognize that we can cancel pi squared here. And then we can simply add 1 over 6 plus 1 over 12. Which exactly gives us 1 quarter. And the term with a squared gets pi squared in the denominator. And now we might already see that this part cancels with the one in the front when we expand the square. In fact, this means from the square in the beginning only two parts remain. Namely 2a pi plus pi squared. And there we can cancel some things again, and then we get 1 quarter plus 1 quarter. And the other term is a divided by 2 pi. So we have that plus 1 half. And now one nice way to write it would be 1 divided by 2 pi times a plus pi. Because then you could say this is simply the integral from minus pi to a of the constant 1. And there you see with the factor in front, this is exactly how we have defined the inner product. Indeed, it's the inner product HA with HA. And there we know, this is exactly the norm of HA squared. So we get that for HA, no matter what A is, Parseval's identity holds. Now this is a very strong result, because in the next step, we could use that to extend Parseval's identity to all step functions. And after that, as we have discussed it in the beginning, we could extend that to all L2 functions. Which means then we have proven Parseval's identity 
for all L2 functions. Which was exactly our goal from the beginning and now we just have to fill in all the steps. Therefore the first step would be to show this general formula here without using any Fourier series theory. And then this whole calculation here is complete and we can go to general step functions. And then the final step will be the extension to general L2 functions. So there you see we already have the plan for the next three videos and there will be a little bit more technical because we have to talk a lot about proofs. Still I really hope we meet again and have a nice day. Bye bye.